Welcome guys to another release of our exclusive extra content for Flask Tutorial. Remember this is, uh, this is part of our free Flask Tutorial. You can check it out flask-tutorial.com and today what we're going to be doing is I want to show you how simple it is to build a RESTful API using Flask. All right, so step-by-step -step guide. We're going to start from the very basics, but then we're going to do a couple of more interesting things like creating resources, deleting, deleting resources, etc. So let's get started. We will be following this repo that I have right here. It's all the code in there. It also has a nice guide in case you guys want to follow it by yourself after this video. And I have already cloned the repo. I have it right here and I also have my editor with the code open. So the first thing that I'm going to do as usual is create a virtual environment to install my dependencies. So I will do mk virtual m flask API. I'm going to call it in this, this particular time. I will be using Python 2.7 um, just for you guys to know. I prefer three, but I want to keep it simple. For this video and I'm going to install all the dependencies for this particular project. We're installing Flask, we're installing also PyTest to run our tests because this API of course will be tested. I'm going to show you how this API works by using the Insomnia text uh, or sorry REST client. All right, it will let us perform REST APIs and we will have like uh, it's a simple REST client that you guys can download or use as an ext extension in Chrome. So once all my applications, sorry, my dependencies are installed, what I'm going to do is I will check, I will show you again how this project is done. If we have a run application as the one we have in the Flask tutorial and this the idea of this run up is show you a step by step guide. So you just have to uncomment each one of these steps to run, right? So for example, if you want to run the step two, you just comment this one and then comment this one. I'm going to start of course with the first example. And the first example has a simple REST API to show books, right? A given book by ID. And that's it. The books are loaded from uh, just a hard coded list in memory we're going to use a database in the step three so to get started i'm going to start this application the application is running as you can see right there and now i will just get a list of books from my database from my api sorry so i'm using this again insomnia rest client you guys can, can use postman whatever other rest client you want and I, I show you right here the response and the headers return. It's that we're ret returning an actual JSON response. All right. So if I add a new book, let's say that I add a new book right here. Uh, I think it's ID 34. I know other book, a different author ID. I save this. Of course, the application is already reloaded, right? Detected change. Again, this is all from our flash tutorial. Check it out if you want more details about it. And I will perform the same request again. And I am doing now a get request. I'm just getting the two different resources that I want. All right. So we have our eight simple API already working. All right. Um, the important part is that this API is receiving and it's serving JSON by default, as you guys no, you might require to use a different type of serializer, for example, XML or I don't know, any other data type. Usually 95% of the times we just use JSON and that's why we are returning that. So now let's dig into the code and see how this basically works. In this case, the slash book resource, the one that we were consulting, um, it's using this response class. All right. So when we are res responding, when we're creating a response in Flask, we saw a couple of ways to do that in your Flask tutorial. For example, when we were rendering a template or just returning something manually. Another way that we have is with this response class. We're manually creating a Flask response and we're adding the contents that we want to add, the status code of that particular response and also 
the content type will be return. All right, so whenever someone is browsing these, these uh, endpoints slash book, when they send a request to slash book, we will respond with JSON and with the contents of our book list, right? Dumped in JSON format. All right, so it's super simple. It's just a response class that you guys can check in the documentation for more details. So another way that we have to return a similar response is instead of manually building the response class, we can respond with or return three elements, all right, in a form of a tuple. All right, so we can, re this is actually returning a tuple and what we're returning is first the content. Again, it's just the dump version of the JSON or of our, the list JSON version dumped from our books. And then we have again, the same status code. And finally, the headers that we want to add to that response. All right, in this case, what we're doing is we're adding content type as the JSON type. In this case, this was automatically generated or done by Flask. So these are two different ways. I'm going to show you how to get this uh, given book. For example, I'm going to get the book slash 33, this one right here, the ID 33. Again, as you guys see, it's a simple process. It's just getting the book from this dictionary, right, with an ID, and it's returning it with the form of the tuple. So I'm going to run it, and you guys can see right there the book. So I'm going to get, for example, the book 34. There you go, the other book is right there. Um, what happens if I add up or try to fetch a book that doesn't exist? I get a 404 not found back, all right? And the idea of that, here's the code invalid 404. The the way we did that is we I, I we have implemented here in search books, right? In utils search book, we have a simple function that looks for a given book. And if it doesn't find the book, what we're going to do is return a 404 error message. If you guys check our flat tutorial, you will uh, understand how this pretty much works, but it's just we're abo aborting, right? And we're returning a 404 status code. Um, I have here an error handler that I, on purpose, just let it, I'm letting it as simple as possible. But of course, here you can change the content type or you can add, for example, more information about the error, whatever you guys want. Our second and third examples are really related. I'm going to start first with our second example. And it's pretty much the same result, but what we're doing is we're making use of this make response helper, which is pretty, pretty handful. All right, so I am just loading the content as I was doing before. I'm just dumping the content of the books in the JSON format and I'm returning this make response, I'm just, sorry, I'm using this make response helper to use a response. And then I am returning, of course, that response that I have generated. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm just going to go get the list of books right there. Let's change the ID of this one, just for you guys to see that it works. There you go, ID 38. And if I show you now the third example, what we will be doing is we will be using this JSON response function, which again, it's similar, right? Make a response, JSON response. What I'm doing is I am just using in my utils, I have just built a, an extra utility function, JSON response, that takes some data and by default returns JSON. So I can avoid, for example, here, including the JSON uh, type all the time. I can just return, I'm gonna show you, JSON response with the content and the status code, and by default, that's going to be JSON. So what I wanna show you here, it's not that these JSON response is genius or anything, it's just we can add different functions in order to, to make our functionality uh, or, or our code easier to read and of course to write, all right? So that's basically what we're trying. Um, if we go now to the third example, this example, the one using the chase response, will use a database, all right? So we will be adding a few more features, for example, creating books, that it's something for up to this point we were just reading, right? We were just cons consulting or getting a list of books. Now what we're going to do is post, right? And 
and create books and for that we're going to be a use a database I'm going to show you really quickly how to set it up so let's see really quickly how to set up our database to run with our app but the first thing that I want to show you is how the database is actually linked in the application if I show you the run app command the first one we were running the one we, we are uncommenting and commenting the um, apps that we actually want to run you will see that we're setting a configuration variable right there which is database name all right so we're uh, configuring our own app with our certain key and value then in this case in the step three we are connecting to the database using that database name all right so we can set the the, the database name in some place so we can then pull it up in our application and the app itself doesn't have to make any configuration or proceedings it just has to read whatever it was set before so for example if we deploy this application to production we can set a different name for production and it's just going to to work so the first thing that i'm going to show you is how the how to initialize this database we have to initialize the database in order to have a table in this case book which is already or, or initially working and hopefully with some data so you will find this library schema.sql file right here that has the command to run in order to create this database so i'm just going to copy there you go and paste it in my console and it will just create my library schema the library schema has as you can see here a simple table book and I'm just adding one testing value that has a special author ID and a name so we can try it out so then I'm, the application is already loaded right with the step 3 as you can see there and I'm just going to go and try to get all the books and you will see them right here I have this special ID alright so that proves that our application is working and it's fetching now books from our database how is it fetching them well it's pretty simple we are as we were doing in all the other previous steps we were just building or in this case we're retrieving a list of books from that database and then we are just doing json dot dot dumps in order to dump that uh, structure to json and we are now using json response this um, function we have built that by default re receives data right status and headers as i am just returning a 200 response with uh, content type equals to json i'm just providing the value for data so i'm just providing the data and by default if i show you here the application is going to be the sorry the, re the response will be application json all right so that's taking care of that process for us then we have the most interesting method which is the actual post one the one we were after and let me show you how it works first i'm going to create a new book right right here i'm adding a given title and an author id and i will just send this request i'm sending it to slash books and with these body parameters in shades and content so i send it we get the 201 created method message and if now I go to list books we see that it was just created right there all right so that's the interesting part so how does the uh, post method actually work so the first thing that we have to note is that it has the same path for the route so in this case we have slash book and in this case also have slash book but what changes is of course the method in this case we are receiving just get requests in this case we're receiving just post requests so depending on the a method employed by the HTTP client we're going to fetch we're going to execute one function or the other which is basically what we're doing here the only difference between listing books and creating books is the method the HTTP method that we are employing um, so how does it work it's super simple we post when we post the book right the the book information we are sending this body uh, with the request the request to create the book and we are doing some checks here we're going to show you in a second and this is probably the most important part we are reading the the json the json content from the request all right we're doing request.json right and it's giving us the content right parsed um, into a 
Python dictionary or a Python, sorry, structure because it can be a list too. So I'm going to just go ahead and print these data. I'm going to add some other messages for you to see. There you go. I'm going to put this and we're going to send or issue another request flask tutorial and I'm going to create another book and you will see right here locked what's the structure of the data that we're receiving all right so it's just getting this particular content and it's parsing it right it's, it's understanding that this that uh, request data is JSON it has parsed it and now this is a Python dictionary something that we can work with so and in this data at the author ID key we have the ID and at the title key we have the title to work with so then we are doing some uh, checks right for example what we're doing right here is checking that both title and author are provided because if one of them is missing we will then return an error we're going to show that in a second and if we reach this line right here or this part that means that both author ID and title has been provided and we're good to go we can just create our uh, resource so we're just building the base query right and then we are just setting the parameters that we're going to use we're going to insert a book with the author ID and title that were provided by that data again remember that data is requested from or re received from the request finally we execute our query we commit and we return a special response which is empty there is no content and we add a special status message to a one created so here is when we start dealing with other status messages and the important if you don't remember or you don't understand this please go check the class tutorial because there is an entire lesson just focus on http all right so it's going to help you um, so that is basically it that is all the process we get the data with the request of Jason attribute this is probably the the most interesting or, or new thing you are saying then we're just executing a simple database query to insert our new book finally we return a response with a special status code 201 created which is what we see right here 201 created and here's the method all right so as simple as that now why do we have all these um, checks to see errors because there might be errors for example if I forget the title let's see what happens I get a 400 bug bad request and I get a custom error message and I am the one generating that error message I'm going to show you is if the if not all the data that I need is provided author ID and title I will generate this error right missing fields title or author ID this one missing fields title or author ID and I am finally just returning right away I'm stopping all execution and returning that particular response all right it's just the error that I have created and a special status message I am doing the same thing if I am detecting that the request didn't send JSON um, as its content type all right so if you send a different request then I'm also give you a 400 bug bug request so that is basically it the new part is how to parse the data from JSON and then we're returning a special a couple of special status messages 400 for errors right bug request from our client and 201 created one we have actually once we have actually created the book in the next step we're going to see how to delete uh, a given book and it's going to be pretty simple uh, I may show you I'm going to go to step four and as you guys will see in this fourth step this is extending the one from our previous step all right so I just wanted to keep this fourth step isolated for you to see the delete method isolated but we are extending we have the same capabilities as we had before we're actually extending the application from the step three so what is going on right here is I'm going to show you the list of books that we currently have right and I will re I will remove let's say the one with ID 2 all right so I'm going to just go delete the one with ID 2 I will send the request and I get back 
if everything is running, yeah, it's running. I get back 204 no content, all right? So again, a 200 request means that everything works correctly. So uh, this request and the response is actually successful. So if I go now, I check the books, I will see really quickly that the book with ID 2 is no longer there. This has worked. So let's see how that actually works. Um, it's again, in this case, the route is slash book and we are actually waiting or ex expecting the book to delete. And we are here expecting a special method, delete, all right? And what we're doing is we are receiving the book ID and there are two things happening and I'm going to show you one first. What happens if the book doesn't exist? I am trying to delete a book with an ID that doesn't exist. So these are our current books, right? And I will try to delete the book with ID, I don't know, 29. It doesn't exist. So I send this request and I get back a 404 uh, response. That is because I'm first checking to see if there is a book with this ID. If this book is not found, I will just return a 404 back, not found, this book is not found. If the book actually is found, as we will see in a second, again, the same example, I will just perform a delete query, all right? Python, as simple as that, there is no, there is no Flask or, or API magic here, I'm just de deleting the book from the, from the database. And finally, and this is important, I am returning again a JSON response, empty, no content, but it has a special status code is actually 204 all right it's usually the the status code that we use to signal a successful delete response um so let me show you again the books we have and we're going to end up removing let's say flask tutorial so or just let's remove the first one id1 so i'm going to delete id1 there you go no content if i go and fetch all the books again there you go, it's no longer there. So these are probably the most important steps to follow in this example. Um, we have also a different example that it's using Flask RESTful. I'm not going to go into this because I wanna actually shot an entire video about Flask RESTful because it's a pretty cool frame over library actually, but it's already there if you wanna check it out by yourselves. What we have seen up to this point is super simple. We're just returning a response in a special way. And then we will learn how to like read the request data from Jason in a special way. And then everything is the same as we saw in our Flask tutorial. That, by the way, go check it out if you don't remember HTTP. If you wanna build a good RESTful API, the most important part is understanding really well HTTP. That is the key. So this is pretty much it. You have seen in a couple of minutes how to create a Flask application, a Flask API, and we will have more content available soon. So subscribe to our Flask tutorial and see you around.